periodic signals play a very important role in signal processing. In this video, we're going to define what it means for a signal to be periodic, and then learn how to find the period of a periodic signal. A signal is periodic if there's a pattern in the signal that repeats indefinitely. So in what I've sketched here, this particular pattern repeats and repeats, and the dot, dot, dot indicates I'm implying it repeats forever, and it repeats in the other direction too, subject to the limitations of my drawing ability. Now the period is defined as a duration of each repeating segment. So in this case, one segment is t naught seconds long, so we're going to call that the period. Mathematically, we can define the period of a periodic signal by stating that x of t is periodic with period capital T naught if and only if x of little t plus capital T naught is equal to x of little t for all time t. And this for all time t is the indefinite repeating part of my definition in words up above. So here's an example of a signal that doesn't repeat indefinitely. I have a couple repetitions here, and this triangular section repeats, but the signal does not repeat indefinitely because in this region here and to the further to the right, I don't have the same pattern that I have near zero. And we would say that that's an aperiodic signal or a non-periodic signal. So let's take an example of a cosine, which I've sketched here, cosine 2 pi f naught t plus phi. The frequency of this cosine is f naught hertz. That means f naught cycles in one second. So each cycle, therefore, is t0 equal 1 over f0 seconds. That's how long it takes for one cycle. I've sketched that on the graph. We can apply our mathematical definition by first computing x of t plus capital T0. I substitute for t in the right-hand side of the expression for x of t, and I'll distribute this multiplication over the sum inside the parentheses to write cosine 2 pi f0 t which is what I had originally, plus 2 pi f naught t naught plus phi. So this t naught is some constant that we are going to determine in a moment, and f naught is some constant. So this is just a phase shift of the cosine. A phase shift of 2 pi leaves the cosine unchanged. So if f naught t naught is equal to 1, then I can ignore this term and write this as cosine 2 pi f naught t plus phi, and that is exactly x of t, and this holds for all values of t. So provided I choose t naught equal 1 over f naught, mathematically I've shown that this relationship x of t plus capital T naught is equal to x of t. Now it turns out that we could have chosen f naught t naught to be equal to some other integer other than 1, for example, we could choose it to be 2, because if I shift a cosine by 4 pi, I end up with the identical signal. I could have chosen f naught t naught to be 4, because if I shift a cosine by 8 pi, I also end up with the same signal. So there actually are multiple periods here, and those correspond to choosing multiple cycles and calling that the pattern with which the signal repeats. So we're going to define the fundamental period to be the smallest t naught for which the signal is periodic. We'll take another example here, a little more complicated, writing x of t as a sum from k equals 1 to n, a k cosine 2 pi k f naught t plus phi k. So in this case, I have the signal as a sum of cosines, but the cosines have a special relationship in their relative frequencies. If I think of the kth cosine as have frequency f k, then fk is an integer times f naught. These are called harmonics. fk would be the kth harmonic of f naught. So the second harmonic is 2 f naught, the third harmonic is 3 f naught, and so on. We'll apply our mathematical definition of periodicity and replace t in x of t by t plus capital T naught to obtain, again, the sum ak cosine 2 pi k f naught times the quantity t plus t naught plus phi k. So again, we'll distribute the 2 pi k f naught over the two terms in the sum inside the parentheses to write this as 2 pi k f naught t naught plus 2 pi k f naught t naught plus phi k. 
And as before, this shifting of time, replacing T by T plus capital T naught, turns into a phase shift in our sinusoids. And provided that the phase shift in each sinusoid is some integer multiple of 2 pi, the phase shift won't change the signal and it will end up to be periodic. So if I choose, again, t naught to be equal to 1 over f naught, then my phase shift is 2 pi k, and that's going to lead to an equivalent expression, a k sum cosine 2 pi k f naught t plus v k, which is what we started with as x of t. So I've shown for all lowercase t, all time, that x of t plus capital T naught is equal to x of t, provided t naught is equal to 1 over f naught. And 1 over f naught is the fundamental period in this case. We could choose a larger value for t naught. We could choose 2 over f naught, 3 over f naught, and so on. And this would still be periodic. But the smallest one we could choose is 1 over f naught. And that was a very special case of a sum of signals. In general, if we're looking at the fundamental period of a sum, we have to find the least common integer multiples of the fundamental periods of each of the signals in the sum. That's a lot easier to illustrate than it is to say. So suppose I take x of t to be a sum of two signals. I'm going to call x1 cosine of 2 pi t, and I'll call x2 0 0.5 cosine of 5 pi t. Well, I've sketched out these signals, x1 in the top, x2 in the middle, and x of t on the bottom. Now, if we look at x1 of t, the fundamental period is one second, because the frequency of this cosine is one hertz. x2 of t has a fundamental frequency of 2.5 hertz, because that would be 2 pi times 2.5 t. And that implies the fundamental period is 1 over f2, or 0 0.4 seconds, as I've sketched on the middle graph. So the fundamental periods of x1 and x2 are different. To find the fundamental period of the sum, we have to find a common period between x1 and x2. I do that by finding the smallest integers n and m so that n times the fundamental period of x1, or t1, is equal to m times the fundamental period of t2. So substituting t1 and t2, I have 1 for t1, 0 0.4 for t2. I see that if I multiply 1 by 2 and 0.4 by 5, I end up with the same number, or 2 seconds. n is the number of periods of the 1 hertz sinusoid, so I'm showing two periods of that sinusoid takes two seconds. This sinusoid has a period of two seconds. It's not the fundamental period, but it has a period of two seconds. If I look at x2 of t, five periods of x2 of t will bring me to two seconds. So x2 of t also has a period of two seconds, but again, that's not the fundamental period. But when I add these two signals, the fundamental period ends up to be two seconds. It's equal to this least common multiple. So when I add the signals, I'm finding the smallest period of the first signal and the smallest period of the second signal so that those two signals have equivalent periods. And in this case, it turns out to be two seconds. And you see in the picture, the sum of these two signals, that indeed the sum repeats at two seconds. Try this again with another example. Here I'm going to use x of t as cosine of 2 pi t plus cosine of 3 t. Well, we'll call cosine of 2 pi t x1 of t and cosine of 3 t x2 t. The fundamental period for x1, it's a 1 hertz sinusoid, so it has a fundamental period of 1 second. The frequency associated with x2 of t is 3 over 2 pi. So I can write 3 as 2 pi times 3 over 2 pi times t. Therefore, the fundamental period for x2 is 2 pi over 3 seconds. So in order for the sum to be periodic, we have to find integer multiples of t1 and t2 that are equal. I'll write that as looking for m and n such that m times t1 is equal to n times t2. Now in this case, because t2 involves pi, 
and T1 doesn't, this is not possible because pi is an irrational number. So there aren't any integers that can take care of canceling out the pi that's part of T2. So this example illustrates a case where x1 is a periodic signal, x2 is also a periodic signal, but the sum is not periodic.